Do you want to learn the language of the Quran? In fact, scratch that. Let's start again. Let's face it, we all want to learn Arabic. A few short months ago, we hosted an episode of Freshly Grounded with Ustad Ismail Beaumont, a graduate in the faculty of Hadith from Medina University. Ustad Ismail has now put together a course that goes through Medina books 1, 2 and 3, which takes a person from pretty much no knowledge of the Arabic language to hopefully speaking and understanding the language. The course is online and available now via the link in our description. The complete course is $700 or £520 if you're in the UK. But if you use the code freshly grounded, you get 20% off all courses. I myself have signed up and I hope you will too. Just head over to mesur.com forward slash Quranic bundle or click the link in our description and hit freshly grounded for 20% off. Angel is a YouTuber with over 260,000 subscribers. He began his journey by sharing his experiences of self-development and openly talking about his traumatic childhood abuse. After five years of uploading and building a loyal community of followers, a few weeks ago, Angel uploaded this. I'm a Muslim, y'all. Alhamdulillah. And now for what I believe to be his first official interview post reverting to Islam. Welcome to episode 211 of Freshly Grounded. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to freshly grounded. After that bit. Created by. After that bit. Best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Alhamdulillah. How how how's things been, man? Like, how, how are you feeling right now? What, what what's kind of um, what's new? Um, how's how's isolation going? Are you guys isolating where you are? Yeah, man. We're. Uh... I want to say really isolating because I live in Florida. Okay. So you know how it is. We're one of the uh, places that's like ranked highest in terms of COVID cases. Fine. So uh, it's not really isolating, but I try to isolate myself. Uh, but other than that, man, everything is good over here. How about you? How's London? Do you know what? Like you mentioned in Florida, London's like at the top right now in the UK, it seems to be anyway, of uh, COVID cases. And so um, they've implemented a new system, which is like a tiered system. Mm-hmm. So um, originally it was tier one, tier two and tier three. And tier three basically meant, uh, to be honest, I can't remember what it meant anymore because there's all of these. But um, they, they just before the holiday season, they added tier four which is what we're in now. Uh, but there's talks that tomorrow there's a review and that they might put us into a tier five. So like they're adding new tiers. And essentially tier four is all of the restaurants are closed, uh, gyms are closed uh, and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, you should work from home if you can, although you are allowed to go um, to your place of work. So we, we were going to our, our studio and then we kind of made the decision to, to maximize what we can at home because it seems to be that it's, it's going really wild right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's a great place to start. So, um, let, let's track it back to, to, to kind of lifestyle stuff. And, um, I, I, I would like to keep the conversation nice and relaxed, but there's so much on my mind. And so I imagine that fearfully it might end up like an interview. So I'll, I'll try and, I'll try and kind of keep that calm. But um, let's let's talk about kind of content that you're uploading pre pre your reversion to Islam, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, out of all of those lifestyle changes that you made, for example, the deciding to 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 to, to have cold showers and and so on and so forth, which one of those decisions was the most rewarding? Mm. It, it's a it's a tough one, man, because. It has to go between either, you know what NoFap is? Yeah. Yeah, so it has to be between NoFap and dopamine detoxing. And it's crazy because not only were those the two most rewarding, but those were the two that, like, it's hard to say which one was the one that truly brought me to Islam. What's the dopamine detox? A dopamine detox is kind of like, it's kind of like fasting. Like, I guess what you would do during Ramadan 
like I'm I'm very I'm a noob when it comes to Ramadan, so I don't know everything 100 percent yet. But um, in dopamine detox, you try your best to limit the uh, amount of uh, things that you have that are releasing dopamine. So you can't you can't stop yourself from getting dopamine because bro, us talking right now is releasing dopamine. You know what I mean? So dopamine is a natural part of this life. But when we're on our phone all the time, or we're on the computer, or we're watching TV, um, I know people who are Muslim, they do not listen to music. But people who are not Muslim, they listen to music, they do all these other things. All these distractions release a ton of dopamine, which our bodies aren't really uh, naturally made for. You know, they're made for natural sources of dopamine, like having a conversation, going outside for a walk, going and exercising doing stuff like that. And then in a dopamine detox, when you remove these things, you're essentially letting your dopamine receptors kind of take a break, go back to normal, and it sensitizes you to everything to where, let's say before you would have walked outside, you saw a butterfly just fly across. You, you probably wouldn't have even noticed the butterfly. You know, but then you do a dopamine detox and let's say, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks in, you go outside, you see that butterfly flying, you, you see the butterfly flying, you're like, man, mashallah. Wow. It just, yeah, it sensitizes you. What's the longest dopamine detox that you've, that you've done? Uh, three months. And what kind of stuff did you take out? So TV, did you completely stop using your phone? I only use my phone for uploading YouTube videos and commenting back to people and that was it what were our phone calls yeah so if if someone were to call me or if someone were to message me i would have like one time in the day or one time every like two or three days where i would hit people back up oh man yeah it's man it's crazy because like when you're not doing it you you can't you can't conceive it. You can't think about it and be like, oh, yeah, I could do that, especially when it comes to work and everything. But trust me, like it is possible. Did you did you create punishments for yourself if you indulged? No, nah, no. Nah, I, I see it more like if you have a kid, you you want to treat the kid good. Like, you know, you discipline the kid. But if the kid messes up, you don't you don't start beating the kid. You know what I mean? And like, of course, you know, you have to slightly punish and a slight punishment might be like all right we're gonna do this this and that and we're gonna prolong the period of time where i can let's say check my phone to message people back but it wasn't it wasn't really big punishing punishments i should say do you think that the 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 fact that you lived such a dopamine um endorsing life before that you, you kind of been very public about um that's what kind of made you kind of shut it all off and say, what would the opposite be like? How could you repeat that? So for example, you've mentioned kind of on your videos before that you would try and almost, um, you, you tried everything that would increase dopamine, right? Um, do you think that that, is that why you went the other way and thought, okay, if, if I've experienced all of these kind of, things that can get me dopamine what would it be like if it was the complete opposite what would it be like if i completely stripped dopamine away from myself as much as possible mm. is that what initiated the the kind of the test i think yes and no yes in the sense that like i was doing all these things and i was i was realizing that i was doing too much and that it was actually leaving me high and dry and to the point where i was just i wasn't really here you know i wasn't present i was I was trying to meditate. I was trying to do things to be present, but it's like those things were futile. They just weren't working because of how much I was doing that was making me unpresent. How much I was doing that was making me uh, seek that dopamine, seek that next hit. And um, when I say no, it'd be more in the sense of like, we've all had moments in our life where we step away from our phone or electronics for a little bit of time and we notice the effects of it. Mm. Now, whether we're conscious of it, whether we actually do something about it, that's on us. But it's like, let's say you go for a, a getaway, like you go camping or you go on a holiday with your family. It's like, 
you might spend a few days without any electronics really where you're just connecting with your family and you know just having fun with them or you're out in nature you're doing something and it's like the effects of that are substantial and that's what kind of led me where i was like ah yeah yeah i haven't changed something yeah so uh, kind of uh, during one of your dopamine detoxes you mentioned that uh, you were kind of trying to refrain from picking up the quran uh, and it, what what made you allow yourself to pick that up then? Uh, well, I didn't want to pick it up because I saw it as like a form of dopamine because I wasn't even reading anything at the time. But then after a while, I just I realized all right, it's it's spiritual. It's a uh, it's something that is going to benefit me. So there's there's really no reason why I should put this off. And then that's when I picked it up. Have people kind of reached out to you that are not Muslim since you you put out your revert story and and because I, I imagine you built up a you, well you did you built up this huge crowd uh, along with Berik of, of of a YouTube following of of people who are either inspired by your lifestyle, uh, intrigued by it, or they 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 simulate it, um, and so in that I'd imagine it's a huge mix of Muslim but also a, a, a very large amount of non-Muslim followers, especially before your conversion story, right? And mm -hmm. um, when they, you did the conversion to Islam video, what was the reaction of, of those people who are not Muslim, who share your lifestyle traits, who also do the cold showers, the dopamine detoxes, they're interested in, into your results by them? What was their reaction like? Uh, well, it was um, some were good and some were bad. Like, you know, the people who were with me, they definitely they were about it. Like there were some people who were with me who, you know, they, it's not that they wanted to become Muslim. It's not that they wanted to hear about, you know, the Islamic journey, but they were with me and they respected my decision and they respected the fact that like I came out and said that, you know, cause bro, when you make yourself vulnerable, you leave yourself open to criticism and, you know, not many people can handle that. But after doing this for a while, you kind of realize like, okay, well, other people's opinions don't really matter. You know, if, if I can't hit them up on my phone and ask them, Hey, how you doing? Then their opinion really doesn't matter. Cause I really don't know them that well. You know? How do you gain that mental toughness though? Because an opinion is an opinion and sometimes it can pierce through that barricade and still reach you. Yeah. It's, um, it's just years of that experience, man. Like, cause when I first started YouTube, I was definitely, I definitely care way too much about what people thought. So, like, if someone gave me praise, I was, um, you know, it, it made my head big. If someone put me down, it would make me question myself. But it's like after so many years, you just get to the point where you're like, all right, man, whether you're talking good or bad, like, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Like, I'm here to do what I'm setting out to do, you know, which is share my experience, share my journey in life. And, you know, if that helps you, Alhamdulillah. But if it doesn't help you, well, Alhamdulillah, I hope it does at some point, you know? Like, I'm not here to, like, force uh, whatever I'm going through on you. In wanting to share your journey, you must be aware or you must have been aware that your choices were unique and like i suppose like different from the the average person's choices right like you're putting yourself through tests tests that in theory and 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 clearly in in result as well lead to a better life but they're decisions that a lot of people will struggle to make even with my even myself because these decisions are not on the kind of surface even something as simple as if we talk about the cold showers I, 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 on the surface of it why would you want to put yourself through like especially in the cold mornings and the cold evenings putting yourself through going through that but the result of it as you've kind of noticed has been so positive um so did you know i guess my original question was did you know that this is a, a way the way of life that i'm leading here is different to the average layman and that's why i want to share it yeah I think the main reason why I wanted to share everything was because uh, when I started the whole YouTube thing, I was in such a low place. You know, I had, throughout my entire childhood, I was abused. 
And then, you know, I, w- I remember I was with this girl at the time. And man, like, I just felt so low. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't be myself for one. Like, if someone were talking to me, I felt like um, I just couldn't be myself. I felt like I was always analyzing, criti- criticizing myself, way too hypercritical. I felt like if the only way I could actually, like, be a fraction of myself was if I drank alcohol or if I did some kind of drug. And then it's like, because I didn't have that connection with myself, I obviously didn't have that connection with other people. And it just it was a very miserable time. And I realized that I, I got to make a change. And I, I knew that the abuse was affecting me psychologically and, you know, physically, spiritually, uh, emotionally, in every way that you can think of. But I, I knew that it's like, all right, well, I can't just tackle that right there because that's something that's going to take years. So it's like, what's the first thing that I can take on right now? Like, what's the first thing that's like really, really affecting my life? And then I realized like, oh, I have an addiction to pornography. Like, I have a problem there. Why don't I, why don't I start there? And then I found like all these videos on YouTube where people were talking about their their experience. And I was like, man, like these these people are really open. They're actually saying that they have an addiction. Like, I would have never said that to anyone. And then I figured, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make it real. I'm just going to make it public. I'm going to put my my journey out there. And initially, I only planned to uh, put up my NoFab journey. And then that was it. Never make YouTube videos again. But, I mean, five years later, yeah, I am. You mentioned about feeding not feeling yourself when when do you feel yourself now that you're out of that when at what point do you feel the best best version of you this is this is me this is really me when do you feel like that like in in my day-to-day life so we, we asked we were speaking about this i think maybe on the last live stream we were saying that like we were talking about feeling 100% happiness. That's what we were talking about. We we're saying the que- the question that we were speaking about then that kind of led me to think about this question to you is we said, when was the last time you felt 100% happiness? And I kind of went on to say that I think that last time was in, in childhood, right? Because in childhood, you you allow yourself to feel 100% happiness because you don't um, have the responsibilities that you have in adulthood. Um and through following your story and, 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 and reading up on your story and the difficulties that you had in childhood, um, I guess let me start with that question and then lead on to the next, lead on to then that question of when do you feel your best self? Um, when was the last time you experienced 100% happiness? Mm, so you're referring to it as 100% happiness and like I've always referred to it as presence, but a lot is the same thing. Um, I'd say when I do when I do martial arts, when I do martial arts, I feel that hundred percent happiness. Yeah, that's exactly the answer that I I I wanted. Not 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 the martial arts itself. Yeah. But I suppose the fact that you're doing something actively that's allowing yeah. you to forget about. Um, allowing you to forget about like the distractions in a weird way I, I think one of the most stressful periods that I went through maybe the last year was probably realizing that because of all of because of COVID and because of the lockdown because of all these restrictions I was I went through a period where I was worried about the future of how even the business is the side of things is going to run right because it was also reliant upon stuff like live events and stuff and I remember at one point as everyone did during the lockdown, I just I just started cooking more. And at one point, I came to the realization that I feel so good when I'm cooking. And it was because I'm so busy with the cooking that you can't allow yourself when you're cooking to to think about other things. Yeah. It sounds like martial arts does, does a similar thing. Probably yeah, at a, a much larger scale and in a much better way. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. How, how does it feel? It's, um, so, you know how Allah made us, uh, supposedly have, uh, like logic and understanding and emotions and stuff like that. And we also have instincts, but 
like the animals pretty much only have instincts. Have you heard of, like have you read anything on that? Have you heard about that? Yeah. Cuz this is um this is just something that me and my friends were talking about and like the best way that I can put it is when you're doing martial arts you're allowing your instincts to basically take the spotlight and then allowing your logic like the the rational part of your mind that can strategize allow that to not completely turn off but to be on only uh, for a very important part. So it's like your mind, your, your thinking mind kind of shuts off. Whereas like you just, you're 100% present. You're, you're kind of just looking for openings because you can't think, oh, I'm going to throw this kick over here. I'm going to try to take this person down like this. Like if you do that, you're going to, you, you're done. You, you're done. Um, how, how, what's his name? Uh, Muhammad Hijal. He says, well, I, you're finished. You yeah. know, so... It's like when you're doing the martial arts, you have to be 100 percent present. And that's that's your instincts, because like you're just you're functioning like an animal. But then you're still functioning like a human where you have that ability to strategize. So um, think of like. I would say chess, but I know chess is haram. Uh, think of like think of like a, a sport like basketball or something like that, where. It, there's obviously strategy involved like you know you have to uh maybe set the pick the pick and roll uh maybe you got to pass it to this guy and he has to pass it over here and then be able to get that cut where someone's like going into into the the the, the thing what's it called bro the the paint i think is that's what they call it or like the inside area where it's like bro there's a lot of strategy involved the coach is obviously giving you guys a strategy but when you're playing the game like you also have to be like aware and present so imagine that but like just a hundred times more uh real i should say because you have a person right in front of your face yeah it sounds like it, it sounds like that's something that we're missing in this generation like that idea of presence because our forefathers probably got that hit there when when they was hunting for food or yep. um or even if you look at like just the generation above us, like my dad tells us stories about farming, about how the reality of, of, of food and the reality of, of his day started at five o'clock in the morning when he'd go to the farm, pick the vegetables, come back home, bring it to mum so that she can cook the vegetables while he's at school, come home from school, go back to the farm, pick some vegetables, drop them to the, to the market, sell them. Uh, and then come home and, and, and the process of just if you like break that down, the process of the walk, like in the heat to the farm, choosing the right vegetables. This is our dinner tonight. Like I'm talking about the generation just above, just above my generation, the presence you would feel. I, I don't think we we get that anymore. Like There's beauty in, in technology, I feel. And you may disagree with me, but in like the automation of things, right? Like I love it. I love like the fact that I can, uh, I, I always give the simple analogy of like turning my, <laughs> turning the light off with my, with, with my voice, right? And, and things like that. The automation of technology. But you definitely you lose the presence. And uh, yeah. the more I conversate with you and the more I watch your content, it makes me feel like presence is one of the most important things. Yeah. Man, I never bro, sacrifice you... presence. Yeah, you you say it right though. Like you say it real proper. Where it's like it's amazing, bro. Technology is beautiful, and the fact that we can't automate things, bro. Like you and me, we're talking right now, almost like a face to face. But it's bro, yeah. you're in London, I'm in Florida. Yeah, we are thousands and thousands of miles away from each other, and here we are talking to each other. Like we're right here, face to face. Mm. Like, that's beautiful, bro. That's beautiful. But then as well, like you have to learn how to use technology and not let technology use you. Cause it's like, if you get too caught up in that automation process, then that's when you start becoming unpresent. You know, like you ever find yourself where like you go on Google, you go to research something and then that one thing leads you to another thing and then it leads you to another thing and then to another and to another. And it's like, well, Lahi, that's beautiful, but at the same time, like two, three hours have passed and you're just sitting there like, whoa, wait, what have I done? And you haven't really done anything, but just look up random things that have been coming up. 
it's amazing how a lot of times things because I feel like so we so I got in touch with you about two weeks ago or maybe three weeks ago and uh, then we had a conversation and then they, like we got distracted and we did we kind of put the conversation on pause mm -hmm. and then you got back to me and I gave you my availability and you you chose the week you chose the next week not the week that of the, the not the week that i emailed you right you chose the next week now that may have been because just because of your availability availability that was the week that you was available but when i i love reflecting back on allah like his timing and and one of allah's names is um oh it's escaped me now uh, uh latif the subtle and the beautiful thing about that name, the subtle, is when you can reflect back on the subtle things that, that Allah did. And the, the, the beauty that is just like clicked with me is that there was that week where you, we could have done the podcast last week, but where it happened this week. And in that week, I've been reflecting so much about presence. And maybe if we had the conversation last week, like the conversation is happening now, it's like coming full circle. And it's like this conversation means so much more to me today than it would have last week. I was yeah. thinking about presence as, as soon as yesterday. Like I'm, I, 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 so, so yesterday I made a video and it was, it relates so closely to this and it was a, 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 a mad experience. So there's this dua, right? This dua that I've been trying, that I've known about for for years, a dua that I've known about for years, and it's so short, bro. It's such a short dua in Arabic. And I've spoken to various shuyukh, right? Sometimes I speak to them about my problems, and they and I, the pattern I notice is that they kept referring back to this dua. Read this dua. This dua is from the Sunnah. It's a dua that will help you. Um, and it was to do with like anxieties and stuff, and like this feeling of like. Maybe sometimes this feeling of overbearance. Um, and the dua is so short. So you could memorize it so quickly. And I, I, and yesterday, I, I just had an idea. I thought, I've been procrastinating this thing for years, but I'm convinced it would take me 90 seconds to master, 90 seconds to memorize this. And I thought, no, it can't be possible that I'm procrastinating something for years and I can complete it in 90 seconds. And so I turned the camera on. I, I didn't know what I was going to do with the footage, but I thought this is... I just turned the camera on because it was in my room. And I set myself a timer for 60 seconds in the end. And I spoke to the camera and I said, I've been procrastinating this for years. And obviously, because I'm familiar with it, because I've been kind of reading it for years, I, it may take me quicker, but I'm going to give myself 60 second timer to memorize something that I've taken years avoiding but telling myself i'm going to memorize i set the timer for 60 seconds timer goes on 60 seconds 60 seconds later the timer runs out i look at the camera and word for word i've memorized this dua and it just made me reflect like on 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 presence in a way like this idea that all i had to do was give that dua 60 seconds of undivided attention and i never did yeah. it was always ah oh, remember to read that dua get out of my phone i even saved it in my favorites because i was like i need to everyone's advising me to get this dua like so i'd read it and i would sometimes think about oh i should memorize that dua i should memorize that dua and it took 60 seconds bro and it's now implemented yeah no that's what it is man undivided attention mm. that's exactly what presence is and like to refer back to what you were saying when you were cooking and you were moving and you were doing something, you the act of you doing something where it's like, all right, you had to be focused. You had to give it your undivided attention or else the food would have probably came out pretty trash. Mm. So it's like you were giving it your undivided attention. You were moving as well while you're doing it. And it's like that's two things that go hand in hand because if you spend the entire day just walking outside, bro, your your attention span, that undivided attention, that presence, that happiness that we're talking about here, bro, wallahi, it'll be incredible. It'll be out of this world. But if you spend the entire day like on your electronics, like, you know, messaging people back on emails, commenting back on social media, um, taking care of um, finances, uh, business aspects, all that stuff, man. It has to be done 
but let's say you spend the entire day doing that. Like I was talking to I was talking to a sister one day and, and she was asking me about this and I said, All right, why don't you do this test? Why don't you test yourself? Like you perform the natural the five salat, right? The five obligatory prayers. Spend the entire day on electronics and then do those prayers and just pay attention to how you feel, like how present you are during those prayers and if you feel anything whatsoever. Then the next day, just spend the entire day outside in nature, walking, playing with your family and stuff like that, and perform your your five salat. Now pay attention to how you feel during the salat and what you know if anything happens during that time. And bro, it's it's incredible. Like it's a simple test, and I I, I urge anyone to try it. And obviously, you know, I'm very new to this. You know, I, it's only been a few months that I have been a Muslim now, but I'm telling you. A hundred percent. If you're present, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. if, but if you were present cooking and it changes everything during that moment in time, imagine doing salat if you're a hundred percent present. It's true because when you're praying salat and you even think that you're just a bit not present, you, you finish that salat and you just... You don't feel good, man. Yeah. No. It's like you did it. You know, you did it. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you did it. But it's like you kind of just went through the motions. Mm. Wow. Okay, so, so, so question. Someone like yourself, you've spent years now trying to build this toughness, right? Um mm -hmm. This like this mental strength, but also then like that going into your actions of being present or being more disciplined. So, how do you advise a person who is at the beginning of that journey? A person who is again like what the stereotypical today's day and age person is spending a lot of time on the phone, phone before bed, phone as you wake up, uh, TV, um, just like lacking presence. Where does a person begin? Well, what it advice all would you give them? Yeah, it all depends on like how uh, how committed are they? Like how bad do they want to change and experience the change? And like how much can they actually put in? You know, like obviously number one, start with a dopamine detox. But what I'm saying is like, are you willing to cut out almost everything cold turkey? Or do you feel like a, a more subtle approach might be better for you where it's like, you know what? Um, this week I'm going to cut down my phone usage by one hour every single day. And then the next week, two hours. And then the next week after that, three hours. And you keep going until, well, now you're only using your phone when you actually need to use it. You know, where it's like, bro, electronics are amazing. But it's like, if you're going to use them, get in, get out. Use it for what you need it and then get out and go enjoy your life. Because I mean... Yes, we do live in a dunya. This is all a test. This is all like something that's temporary. But at the same time, do you want to live this entire dunya, like spending most of your time on electronics? Or do you want to live most of the dunya actually uh, fully immersed or not immersed, but fully present? You know, being aware of what's going on in the dunya, actually experiencing this life. You have social media. I know you have social media. Um how do you use that? How do you access it? What time do you use to access that? Because you do reply to comments. You do. Yeah. Um, you're active enough to not for us for like the, for like someone on the outside like myself to not even realize that you're 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 balancing that time. So how do you access social media? Yeah. So I have um, I have certain social media. I got the YouTube. I have the Instagram. I have the Twitter, and would you classify Patreon as a social media as well? No, I wouldn't classify. I, I mean, like the instant. Okay, okay. Instagram, instant, Twitter, you, instant. not even YouTube. I'm talking Instagram and Twitter, the micro social media. Man, I mean, those I try to get to them at least like once a month. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, I know people are direct messaging me, and sometimes I go on, then I have like. 30, 40, 50 messages from people. 
Um, but it's it's just it's it's such a slippery slope, man. It's so mm-hmm. easy to get lost on Instagram or on Twitter. So I really, really try my best not to go on there too much. I was thinking about this um, this happiness this happiness question, right? Like the, the same time I was thinking about it, it, it led to me thinking about procrastination. Um, and I started going down this this path of thinking about um, if I wanted to achieve, well, I suppose presence, right? But I was I I was like hung up on this idea of a hundred percent happiness, which I know is like unattainable. Uh, but I was like, hung up on like maximizing, mm. maximizing that feeling. You know the feeling that you get so rarely, which is the feeling that when you're laughing so much that your stomach hurts and you can't yeah. control it. You're around people you love and something just triggers you. And any other time you, you would you were to hear that, it wouldn't work. But if but you're just uncontrollable. And at that point, nothing else matters. Yeah. It happens so rarely and I feel like it happens so rarely for a reason. It's great. Like the scholars say that laughing um, in, in, in life and joking should be like salt on food. Uh, not enough of it and the food is not is just bitter. Nobody likes it. Too much of it and the food's too salty. Yeah. However, uh, I was thinking like how can you increase those natural moments, right? And then so these are all the things that I was I was thinking about. And I started like, listing things in my head and times where I felt good. And 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 the things that I had ended up listing were stuff like the times where I um I felt the need to talk and say something in like, for example, a disagreement and I choose not to, that made me feel great. Um at times where I've beaten procrastination, like yesterday, it feels mm-hmm. great. Um clarifying things and, and stuff like that how much does diet have to play in it what's your do you have you cut out sugar mm. i'm not aware of your diet but yeah. i imagine that diet's like a big thing so what is angel's sugar intake <laughs> i only get it from fruits and veggies i can imagine yeah it's on um, bro it's super important it's super important to uh at least moderate your sugar intake because like even even fruits man like you don't want to be getting too much fruits and yeah i know um the fruit and sugar is slightly different and when i say slightly different is because fruit and sugar is accompanied by micronutrients and fiber and then the fiber most importantly it kind of um it kind of lowers the glycemic impact of the fruit on your body so like you won't want to really have like a an insulin response to let's say if you eat a banana, if you eat some dates, you know what I'm saying? Where it's mm-hmm. like, it's the sugar as well in fruits is uh, mainly fructose, which is processed in your liver versus being processed elsewhere. But still, like if you have too much fruit, like one, you're going to start gaining weight. People think they're not going to gain weight if they eat too much food. But, man, your your liver can only store, I want to say, it's like 75 grams of glycogen from fruit. So, bro, two bananas and a few berries, you're done. Really? Like you, you start having more than that, your body, your body either is going to get rid of it or it's going to store it. And we already know our bodies want to store things. So your body's going to store it as fat. Now, all that set aside, like, if you're having too much fruit, it it kind of plays havoc on your uh, your mental state and your emotions. And the way that I would put that is like, you ever had um, you ever had something really sweet, like a milkshake or maybe some pie or like some candy, and then like an hour or two later, how do you feel? Tired. You feel tired. But how are your emotions? Do you feel irritable? Yeah, I guess. You don't feel good. You don't feel replenished. You don't yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know how you know how the the doctors say uh not to overeat and even the prophet peace be upon him said to not overeat. What happens when you overeat? Don't know what happens when you overeat. Well you mean you mean chemically? No, to you, to you. Like, what do you? It, at some point in your life, you probably overate something. Yeah, what yeah. I remember. Feel? I remember a. I remember one specific day when I was younger. Um, I couldn't walk. 
I was like, oh, it hurts to walk, man. I didn't realize I ate this much. I went out with my dad to a restaurant, my favorite restaurant. And I didn't realize that. I don't know if we were just conversating, but I was just eating and eating. And I didn't know I was maybe 12, 13 years old. And I remember I was walking with my dad and I was like, wow, it hurts me, man. Walking hurts me. I need to sit down. And uh, yeah, it didn't feel good. I couldn't even think about food. Do you remember how you were mentally? Like, did you feel like you couldn't think as clearly? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like in a, almost like in a haze. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that very clearly. Yeah, sugar does the same thing. So, like, if you start having too much sugar, uh, it's increasing your insulin, and the in the role of insulin is to remove an excess amount of sugar from your bloodstream. Right, that's why people who are diabetic they need to take insulin, or else they actually have too much sugar in their blood. All right, so when you're having too much sugar throughout the day, you're having insulin spikes throughout the day. Just all these random spikes throughout the day. If you have all these spikes every time insulin comes in and removes a whole bunch of excess sugar, it kind of leaves you dry. It, it leaves you very low. So like, imagine. Every time you eat, you're having a lot of sugar. Like, imagine how that's playing on your mental state, on your emotions, on your ability to just focus and be present. How, how do you cut out sugar? Because do you, do you, is the best technique to go cold turkey? I remember, I think, I think, I might be wrong here, but I think someone told me once, I have no evidence for this, maybe you can help me, that sugar, he was even saying this about sugar or caffeine, I believe it was sugar, is the most addictive drug but the easiest uh but the most um like the easiest to uh uh det detox from in that in that like other drugs uh you can uh, you you feel the need to relapse very quickly with sugar i think he says something like after seven days you get that feeling for about seven days after that it's it, it there's no addictive like i need that again but the minute you have it again you need more I, I think it was sugar. So, um, is there truth to that? And 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 do you do do you just go cold turkey? Is that the best advice? Again, bro, it, it depends on the person. Some people they can do cold turkey. Some people have to do a, a more subtle approach. But like the best advice I have is either fast for like the amount of time that it takes. And by fast, I would say not even do like no eating whatsoever i'm talking about like one meal a day or two meals a day where it's like okay you're only going to be eating during this time and just be really strict be really disciplined with yourself like look i'm this is what i'm going to eat i may not feel the best i may want to eat sugar but that's all right that's temporary it'll pass and if you want to make it even easier on yourself work out like go and work out whether that be uh you know, body resistance, where you're doing calisthenics, whether that be free weights, doing uh, resistance training like that, strength training, uh, whether it be martial arts, whether it be going for a run, going swimming, or just going out for a walk for like a few hours, like do something where you're moving and your body has to like use up the energy it has. Because the, the crazy thing about sugar is that you would think it gives you energy, right? Like it gives you this instant energy right away. But it's actually couch locking you. So like, let's say you wake up, bro. You make yourself some oatmeal and you add a ton of brown sugar with some maple syrup or with some honey. And then you add some fruits. And uh, I don't know, maybe you have um, maybe you have some juice on the side. Like that, that's a ton of sugar, bro. Uh, so you have all this. Like, yes, you're going to feel energy for a very brief period of time, maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then, bro, if you actually pay attention, that is locking you into wherever you sit down. Because then you're going to try to get up and it's like there's going to be a part of you that's going to resist getting up and moving. And then by the time you're moving again, you, you feel depleted. You feel like you don't have much energy. So then you're like, ah, oh, well, I need something. I need some something else to eat because I don't have any energy. So then here you go. And you have some more sugar and they'll give you a nice little spike, but it, it repeats this cycle over and over and over again. And man, like, I don't know if you've ever been there, but when I was younger, I would play video games the entire day. I would wake up and it's like I would have all this sugar 
And then I would just sit down and start playing video games. And because I would have all the sugar, it would just keep me locked into that couch playing video games. And I wouldn't want to get up. I wouldn't want to do anything else. And if I, even if I got up to eat something else, I didn't even want to do that. This is leaving me very reflective. Yeah, man, I can't deny anything you're saying at this at this point, man. Especially with the sugar thing. Especially with the sugar thing. The sugar thing is crazy. Yeah, man, and a crazy thing too. A lot of people want to say that um, uh, well, carbs, like if you eat rice or you eat bread or something like that, like that's sugar too. Like that converts into sugar. It's like. Yes, you're not wrong. It does convert into sugar, but it's a more gradual process. You know what I mean? It's not like an instant spike. And then as well, like you can have white rice, which supposedly has a very high glycemic index, meaning that it'll turn into sugar very rapidly because they stripped the outer layer of the rice. You can eat that by itself and it'll have the same effect almost as just straight sugar. But you're, you're obviously not eating white rice by itself. You're eating it with like uh, maybe some chicken, maybe some fish, maybe some red meat, um, some vegetables, things like that. And like all those things combined, the fiber, the, uh, the fats, the proteins, it lowers the glycemic index where you don't have that spike of insulin. Now, you have some sugar in the meal. Yeah, it might be um, – it might be – I wouldn't say put on hold, but like the effect of it might be lower, but it's still going to have a detrimental impact on your energy levels, your ability to focus, your ability to just be present. Like, man, eat, eat some steak and some vegetables and then eat uh, just straight carbs, just rice, potatoes, and um, I don't know, something else. That, that doesn't have much fiber. Just eat that and pasta. then see how you feel afterwards. Yeah, bro. Eat some pasta, bro. Just eat some pasta with like some potatoes in it. No meat whatsoever. No fiber whatsoever. See how you feel an hour later versus eating some steak with some vegetables. Uh, how, how would one feel after? Oh, bro. World's different. Because you eat the steak and the vegetables and your insulin doesn't really spike. So it's like your your ability to focus is it's inhumane, bro. Like, have you ever fasted, or have you ever, let's say, um? So you're saying, fasting? so you're saying that the steak and the vegetables is better. Uh, I'm just saying in in this scenario it would be better. Right, right. Like in in this example, this test. Yeah, 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 sure. But you've done Ramadan, right? Yeah. So you know how like you have to fast from sunrise until sunset. Mm -hmm. you know how you have to do not only fasting from food but you also have to fast from water exactly Am I correct that's correct right, so how many hours would you say you're fasting during that time frame would you say like 12 maybe like 17 i think it might be over here 16 17 16 how do you feel aside from like maybe some hunger pains here and there aside from like oh man like i want to drink something how do you feel during certain points when you're not feeling like that? How focused do you feel? How mentally clear do you feel in your head? You definitely feel mentally clear. You definitely mm -hmm. feel mentally clear. Yeah. Focus wise, I think that the lifestyle I live outside of Ramadan negatively affects, I'm talking about my diet here, the mm -hmm. lifestyle I live outside of Ramadan negatively affects uh, my Ramadan because I, I I'd be lying if I said if I if I if I'm thinking out loud that I'm focusing more, but I think it's because I'm I'm comparing it to a lifestyle where I'm constantly gi giving myself instant grat gratification. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I feel like I need a spike, I'll get something. If I feel like I'm thirsty, I'll get what. So because I'm not disciplining myself eleven months of the year. I'm like, oh, I can't focus because I'm compare. I'm I'm distracted by the fact that I haven't eaten. I can't I can't like again make myself present on the task. 
If I, but, but, but the clarity one's an easy one to answer. Um, is my mind more clear? 100%, 100%. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so memorable. Like you, I, if you say, like, how did you feel last Ramadan? I can tell you. If you say, how did you feel last June? You just say random month. I can't tell you because June was like any other month. Ramadan, I can remember the, the, the feeling of clarity. So you're right, 100%, you're right. Yeah. But I think that, I think that, uh, I think what, what I'm taking from this, and, and I take this often from, from, from amazing people like yourself that I, that I often have these chats with, is that there's an element of it that has to be a lifestyle. And there's parts of that lifestyle that I'm slowly starting to grow and, and, and gain and learn about and, and implement. An example of it is um, like this whole, this whole like weight loss um, thing, right? Of, um, yo-yo dieting and uh, and different things so i have a friend uh who um is currently on this diet where he's eating very specific meals and he's very strict on what he does and does not allow himself and for someone like me that's it's a lot right it's a lot to hear that and you think oh there's no long- how can you have longevity in it and even he says like you know i'm only doing it until this period of time after this period of time i'll be fine because i would have reached my goal and I think what I, 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 I'm not for any, in any way, shape or form, um, <clears throat> putting that down. But what makes more sense to me is to cut out a le- less, less things before a longer period of time, because then it becomes a lifestyle. And when something can become a lifestyle for me, I feel like I can, I can start living it. Like for example, the cutting out sugar thing sounds difficult, right? Like completely cutting sugar out. But it does seem attainable as a lifestyle. And it seems like something that you can maybe carry on for the rest of your life and then see loads of uh, like see a massive difference on as opposed to for the rest of my life um you know being a vegan like people do the vegan thing and i know that like i, I know that's what I will hurt, but right now with the mindset that i'm in right now right like i know people who do ve- who be vegan for a for a year or six months um, for health benefits, right? As opposed to for um, for like the, for like moral reasons and stuff like that. Uh, that and then, for, but for me right now, the, the situation I'm in, the idea of going vegan and going cold turkey on everything, uh, un, uh, apart from things that I would be allowed to eat in a vegan diet, sounds more difficult than, for example, a lifestyle of of, of no like added sugar. Mm. My point is that the lifestyle thing makes a lot more sense to me than the try this for six months, try this for one month kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who would try veganism for X amount of time for health purposes because, man, veganism, it can work for some, I'll be honest. It can work for some, especially if you have the digestive system that can handle that much fiber. If you're truly eating vegan, like plant-based, whole bunch of vegetables, whole bunch of legumes, like black peas, no, not black peas, black beans, red beans, pigeon peas, stuff like that. Like, dude, that stuff has, is actually never fully digested in your body. So like, if you have the digestive system that can handle that, by all means, go ahead. But as well, like, you know, you know how much you have to supplement on a vegan diet, just so you are like, decent in terms of micronutrients and i'd even go as far as to say macronutrients for some people but it's like for health i wouldn't do veganism for health like veganism is truly truly uh, a moral ethics type movement but i, I feel you i feel you 100 percent. where it's like you should focus on making lifestyle changes versus i'm gonna do this for x amount Quick of time wins. yeah 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 yeah, in, in anything in life, quick wins just don't. This is not the way forward. Like quick wins, just they. That, they it's exactly like what it is in the name. Like it's a, it's a very quick win, and then you're back to kind of like where you where you began. So, uh, Angel, exactly. I'm, I'm conscious of your time. I know that we we've already gone over the time that 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 you kind of allowed us to, uh, or, or, or that we kind of arranged. So um, I appreciate brother, your time already, brother. We're good. If you want to, sure? run it a little bit longer. I will make time. No worries. Fine. When well, I, bro, I have, when. On a side note, my bad to cut you off. When you were saying about like uh, that, I chose the the week after and not the week of. That's just something I do with everything. Like I may I may have time this week, but I'll still set it for next week because man, I, I've always found that 
just the creator works in mysterious ways, man. And like, if I said something for next week, like something will show sure enough come up this week where it's like, ah, man, like if I would have said it for this week, then I wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah. And that's a beautiful trait because I, uh, there was a lecture I was watching recently and he, uh, and the Sheikh, he said that, um, nothing good. There's like a principle that nothing good comes from, uh, hastiness mm-hmm. and, uh, nothing bad comes from, I think maybe patience. I need to check that, mm-hmm. but nothing, but, but like that kind of like sentiment, right? That like uh, having time to think about things and to, to, to take time on things is, is much better than constantly being hasty. And that's a big battle of mine because I'm a very hasty person. Uh, yeah. Angel, uh, if you're up for it, uh, I'd love to ask you some questions. I'm not sure if you know about our game. It's not going in focus there, but uh, let's see if I can get some focus on that. Yeah, put your hand behind it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> It's a um, game. Okay. okay, we've got a game here. And uh, uh, what I'd love to do it. is once we're done with this episode, I'd love to send you out a copy. Right now, um, uh, they've uh, stopped international shipments uh, from the UK uh, because of uh, the whole COVID situation. Uh, but as soon as it's back, I'd love uh, to send you a copy. But what it is, it's, it's a game of, uh, it's, a, it's the freshly grounded game. It's 75 cards with questions that make uh, you hopefully make you reflect uh, about yourself about your relationships um about loads more and i'm opening a fresh box for this um but if you're up for it uh, i'll ask you a couple questions before we f- before we finish up and uh and if you're up for it i'm actually gonna um actually i'll speak to you about that after the podcast yeah man i'm down though i'm down yeah so just stay just maybe just stay on for a couple minutes after we're uh, after we're done and i'm gonna uh, hopefully uh, get you on board with something else. So, uh, the game, here we go. I'm going to ask you some, I'm going to completely shuffle it, ask you, I'm going to say three questions, uh, before we round up this episode, uh, and then we'll ask you some more off, off of this episode. (laughs) All right. Okay. So how to play? Let me read, let me get that to you so you can read how to play. How to play. Don't judge. Be vulnerable. All right. All right. right. Two rules. Okay, here we go. Complete shuffle. Oh, that was really bad. First question. Okay. I'm going to avoid any questions that are like a two-way thing uh, because I want you to answer right. So because some of the questions are about me, right? Uh, Actually, you know what? I'm going to just, whatever it says. Yeah, just do it, man. Okay, the first question. What keeps you balanced? Martial arts. Actually, let me start from the beginning. Salat, martial arts, prayer, time outside in nature, and time with family. I like it. What's a win you could really do with right now? Why? I'll repeat that one more time. What's a win you could really do with right now? Why? A win? Like not a L but a W. Yeah, W. Uh, a win that I could really do with right now is the whole traveling restrictions kind of easing up, so that I can finally head out to Thailand. Wow! For 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 martial arts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you read the Four Hour Work Week by uh, Tim uh, Ferriss? I heard about it. I never actually read the entire book. It's an amazing book. I, I I did something similar to you. I bought it and started it and then I put it away for a couple of years and then I did read it from start to finish. And um, yeah, it's powerful because it allows you to live, a, it, or the idea is living a lifestyle that, you know, you, you that doesn't revolve around your work. It revolves around you and you're able to kind of work remotely. And the reason I thought about it is because he starts the book with his uh, trip in Thailand. Hmm. Do you think I'm good at hiding my emotions? This is going to be a tough one for you because you don't really know me, but I guess that's the fun of the game. Do you think I'm good at hiding my emotions? Let's see how good of a judge of a character you are. Uh, be honest. Dude, I'm... I would say... I would say like 
where you're not like 100% showing your emotions, but you're not hiding them either. But you're not 50 50 because it's like you still let some emotions come through. But it's just like some people, you might talk to them and like, let's say uh, something funny pops up or like something happens where it's like you would naturally smile or you would naturally like laugh about something. Um, that person would like hold back. Like, yeah. I didn't see you holding back. So, I mean, I guess from the limited amount of time, I would say you're 75% in terms that. of showing your emotions. Yeah, I'd say that's fairly accurate. I, I, I think I... I think I'm a bit higher. I, I not in a or not in a, a praiseworthy way, but I feel like I can't hide my emotions, and I and I feel like there's definitely negatives um, involved with not being able to hide your emotions, especially with negative emotions. There's definitely negative. What are you most thankful to Allah for this week? I'd say learning the uh, the the tashahud like the first part completely because for a long, for, bro, for a long time, like, yeah, I was learning the, um, the Surah Fatiha and then the, um, the other Surahs that you would recite because it's Sunnah. Uh, but when it came to the, uh, the Tashahud, I kept having issues with learning it just cause I'm not, I'm not really one of those people that learns very easily. Um, whether that be reading, whether that be listening or whether that be like verbally saying something like, I just, I always had a hard time learning in the sense of like cognitive recall, like being able to uh, retain information, process it, and then store it, and then re grab that information, in, let's say uh, a month, two months, three months later. I've been more of like one of those people who learns things through their body, like a somatic individual. I think in, um, in, in, in a scientific term, it would call the, uh, kinesthetic learning where you learn through uh, body positioning body movement um nerve ending central nervous system and stuff like that so it was just really hard to touch who man that's all i gotta say and you know alhamdulillah man alhamdulillah i know the touch who now i'm not gonna recite it here i'll probably mess up <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, listen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, man. And, and, and I'm sure the audience will too. And uh, we'll leave the link for your uh, revert story in the bio, in the description. I didn't want to speak about the revert story on this episode because um, I wanted to get the most out of our conversation. I know that that already exists online. So um, thank you so much for being open and vulnerable for us, man. And uh, inshallah, we, we, we catch up soon. Inshallah, man. Thank you for having Jazakallah me. Khair, man.